up, you guys? Marty Schwartz here of Marty Music, hanging out with my buddy Tim Pierce from Tim Pierce Guitar. Uh, in fact, there's a link below down there for Tim Pierce's uh, cool, YouTube man. channel and stuff. Thanks. So uh, we're hanging out here at your lab. Secret location Secret, somewhere in the desert, yeah. Or a bunker 20,000 yeah. feet below sea level. Yeah. That's my favorite. I get that from Tenacious D. I took that from them. But, um, but he says it in a Dr. Evil voice. Uh, so anyway, we're hanging out in your studio. And it's a Thursday gear video. Oh, And cool. so we happen to be hanging out. And what I thought would be super cool, because we're surrounded by guitars here, mm -hmm. um, just for you to pick. I, I, I helped because I'm, a, I'm like a kid in a candy store right now. So I helped pick. But we have five of your five interesting guitars in your yeah. fleet. Yeah. Your fleet. Some rapper, rappers have a, a collection of cars. Session guitar player is a collection of guitars. But They're just tools, but they there are a few of yeah, them. So yeah, so let's talk about the this first one you have. It's very cool. Yeah, it's the reissue from about the 90s, Jerry Jones reissue. You know, Jerry Jones made so many good instruments. And it's the choral sitar uh, reissue. And, you know, the heart of it is this plastic rubber kind of pad here that the strings lay over, and you get a nice... <laughs> Buzzy thing. Uh, lots of hit records were made with this in the 60s and then again in the 80s. And then, of course, it's good for Middle Eastern. You could tune this to some nice sympathetic chord. It's not really tuned right now, but it still sounds pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> now, they make this, uh, they make a small version of this. Now, somebody now, I'm not sure who it is, Makes a small mm -hmm. version of this without this, so it's a little more affordable. Okay. Looks like a, a little uh, teardrop, the body. So like um, like Norwegian wood and like the stones, they used real sitar, right? Not always, no. I mean, I... I oh, yeah, you're right. Well, Those Norwegian were real. Wood, yeah, 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 yeah. Was yeah. Like, yeah you know, you're right. George, yeah. George was yeah. on his uh, journey. But so on a lot of the Motown <laughs> songs, you'd find these, and then there was a Robert Palmer hit in the 80s with this, and then you just played a Tom Petty song. Uh, yeah. well, no, I, 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 well, yeah, don't come yeah. around here yeah. no more. Yeah. That's, I mean, I, I just thought of what this is that. I just so. remember it from Motown songs in the 60s. Yeah, time. very cool. Yeah. So, sitar guitar, no, sit, well, what do you call it? A sitar guitar? Electric sitar. Electric sitar. Yeah. No big deal. We'll just hang in with electric <clears throat> sitar. And the original, I think, was called a Venny Bell. Venny Bell. But this is a Jerry Jones model. So. Very good. Good. Very cool. Let's see another one. Okay. If we'll you don't on. mind. Moving on, I've got my wires, I don't get my wires crossed. This has been my favorite. I've struggled for years to find a good 335. Spent some money on some vintage ones and sold them all. Uh, and this one, I went down to Norm's Guitars uh, in the desert, in the valley. And, um, <laughs> do you know Norm? I do know him, okay, he's cool. a good guy, he really is. A good Have guy. they ever filmed you when you're in there? No, no. Uh -uh. Um, this is a Joe Bonamassa model and I picked it up, Ooh. it was sitting there and it I've had, heard of him. You'd had just the right neck, you know, just the right amount of chunkiness on the neck, and the frets were great. I I bought it. It was not crazy expensive. It was used. Didn't have a, the case, and I put in. I think these are Monty's pickups. Yeah, Monty's in England. They're called Monty's pickups, and they're really, really good sounding pickups. Uh, do you prefer a fatty kind of? Yeah, neck? Like, and do they call it the fifties neck? I'm not sure what they call it, but the, a lot of the, I think a lot of the late '60s ones were thin. At a certain point, they got thinner. Okay. Early '70s ones, and I've had a couple of those and tried to make them work because they're more affordable vintage guitars, and the, my hands are just too chubby. You know, the, the thin Gibson necks don't work for me. Okay. Uh, the thick ones do, so it's just I, I forget the, the I, nuts wider. Now. I wouldn't know yeah. about chubby fingers. <laughs> yeah, let's hear it. Yeah. But I finally found a 335 that I can use for the rest of my life. And it stays in tune nicely. It's important. How do, you, how do you describe the difference between a 335 and a Les Paul? They're radically different, really. This this is like this got this wonderful you like explode your cheeks. Okay. That's how this is, right? Like Dizzy Gillespie. It's kind of soft around the edges, no matter how much you distort it, and it's got this kind of it still has a snap to it, you know, BB King, right? <laughs> I like that. Les Paul mid range is like a fist. Okay. It's like, <laughs> mm, mm, like ACDC, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So imagine BB King or Larry Carlton, you know, or Robin Ford, although he plays any kind of guitar, but. 
Yeah. And then just imagine ACDC for Les Paul. You know? Okay, that's a good yeah. way. Now, yeah. Les Pauls are real heavy. Not all of them, but they can be heavy. Yeah. I mean, if you can find one in the seven, eight pound range, you're going to be better off. That's why I switched out. I had a traditional, yeah. and it was the heaviest guitar yeah. I've ever played. Yeah, generally that a lot of them are too heavy to, you know, yeah. to wear. Yeah, no, they really yeah. are. And yeah. uh, I mean, maybe I'm just, you know, getting older. But uh, yeah. but a, uh, I, I sold the traditional and then I got a standard. And I mean, I specifically, I got it off used off of yeah. Reverb.com, right. but I looked at weights. Yeah. Like I was like, I just want yeah. one that I like yeah. the way it looks. Yeah. And, you know, maybe there's a little video demo of it yeah. and how light is it. So yeah, I found the lightest one I could find on there. Around eight pounds is fine. Yeah, you I know, think it was good. like seven point something. Yeah, that's that's where you want to be if you can. Sweet. Yeah. So yeah. Joe Bonamassa 335. Yeah, it's great. It's ne awesome. Neck man. is great. I love 335s. So uh, what else we got? Now, I have this PRS that is the best sounding PRS. It's new. He keeps He keeps improving his work. Paul does. And does he sit there and get his hands dirty and stuff? Yeah, he's he's very driven, and he has a, a, a great group of people that work with him, and he's just constantly experimenting. So this has really open-sounding pickup. Like the great old PAFs were really open. Not too high output. I mean, it's really, it's glassy. You know, you can really hear every note in the chord. I never understood the, uh, that pickup selector on that. Oh, no, you have that now. Yeah. I had the old one. Oh, the old one, yeah. I had an old, yeah. like, you know, it was, yeah. I got it in, in like, 95, I bought mm -hmm. it. The first nice guitar I ever bought yeah. was a PRS, and uh, I only sold it to invest in a 335. Because I, at the time, I was like really into fish, and he plays a like semi hollow. I just dreamed of having that kind of semi hollow. So I would probably still have my PRS, and I've never seen more um, questions now about PRS because uh, John Mayer has started playing one a lot, and that has I think been he's got a. Paul Reed Smith's got to be very excited about that. Yeah, and I, I think that's that's a wonderful thing that because Paul is uh, he he is kind of an underdog uh, in some ways, uh, even though his guitars were used really heavily, I think, in the '90s by a lot of bands. He's constantly trying to improve and get his thing out there, you know. And uh, for me, I love the single cuts because they remind me of a traditional Les Paul, so mm -hmm. I feel comfortable there. And every one you play, the necks are great. I mean, one of the things he gets criticized for, his guitars are so consistent. It's okay that you sold one because you can go buy another one and it'll be as good right. as the one you sold. So the ones he's making now are better and better. I mean, look at the bridge, the, the metal he uses. He's constantly experimenting with, with the metal, the finishes, the pickups, everything. Everything matters to him, but not everything. So when you're doing a session... Do you, you kind of hear the music and you're obviously <clears throat> under the pressure of, of yeah. time and constraints yeah. and everything. What, um, do you, and you bring like a bunch of guitars to the yeah. session or if you're yeah. here, you have some. Yeah. What, uh, what, what makes you grab this PRS? Like what kind of music do you, do you lean towards distortion with it or do you lean towards? This, this particular one I would use for half distorted tones, for singer songwriter tones. Okay. Because... <laughs> It's so clear. so clear so here before yeah. Yeah. and it can get aggressive easily but you can still clean it up and get bell like sound now i wouldn't use it if some people want to see a les paul in your hands there's still people out there who mm -hmm. if it says gibson they're going to like it better <laughs> so then i'll pick up a gibson les paul and instead of this yeah if if that's the case if that's yeah you want to make the client happy. Exactly. <laughs> That's uh, the their job. Dream, make their dreams come true. Yeah. yeah I, right. You know, I. it's a good thing to keep uh, keep on your... Uh, Radar. Yeah. Or like, consciousness. People Don't forget what yeah, you're there for. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you're working with and for people, pay attention to what their favorite stuff is. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Do you? Can you think uh, offhand uh, of like one of the best reactions you ever got from, a, from like an artist on one of your sessions 
I mean, recently I have this, or, uh, I'm going to do a video with her, this young artist named Sophie Fister, and she literally shrieks when I play stuff. Aww. You can't really beat that. Is she young? Yeah. 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 Still got all the excitement. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it, it, everybody, when you're in the studio and working for, for anybody, they, they, they really, you get a lot of love from people when nice. you, when you give them something that makes their song sound better. Yeah. You know, or you did that, you did that for me. So yeah. I don't know yeah. if I shrieked or not, but uh, yeah. maybe I did yeah. and I don't remember. <laughs> and we're back. Uh, well, okay, so we got the PRS. So what's uh, what's the next? Uh, oh, well, next luxury item that you will not you will not be winning. Whoa! What is that thing? It's a big, beautiful piece of plastic guitar <laughs> with a wood neck. But uh, this is the guitar that Jack White used in the heyday of the White Stripes. Not this very guitar, but this model, this vintage. It's the same. You know, it's an old airline, and it just sounds. In a, for me, because I am too polished of a player, a guitar like this helps because it can make me sound rougher around the edges. Sometimes people want like sound yeah. like you're like on the verge of yeah falling off. Of the yeah. Yeah. Play, can you play more like a teenager, or can you play like <laughs> shitty? Please. Oh yeah, I can play like a teenager, no problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let me I'm, just tune, uh, make it out of tune a little bit. Yeah. Well, it's 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 not going to be perfectly in tune. It's always going to be a little out of tune. Yeah. That's so much character, though. I don't have a fuzz on this pedal board, but with a fuzz, it's really going to sound great, you know? Cool. Beautiful character. And it's frankly hard to play. Yeah. So it makes me fight, and that can translate into a cooler performance sometimes. I, I've heard of lots of guitar players that like guitars that, are, that they have to fight. That are tough, they have to fight, yeah. It's a real thing. There's a thing out there, not for me, but... <laughs> Once in a while, it's good. Yeah, no, I get it. You're fitting into so many different yeah. genres. And, yeah. I mean, you have to be a chameleon, really. I do. Or you, yeah. uh, you're making dream. You're in the dream making job. Yeah. Yeah. What do you do for a living? I make dreams come oh, true. Oh, I make your dreams come true. <laughs> wow. I, I had no idea. <laughs> I didn't either till I said it. So. Yeah. No, it's yeah. you. You said it. I'm just repeating what you said. Yeah, um, so once again, wait, what's it called again? I should know. But Airline. Airline. Yeah. I mean, it looks. I mean, it looks super damn cool. It is cool, you know. It's. <laughs> it's love it. Yeah, and I mean, right down to having plastic on it. Yeah, and then he switched at a certain point. Jack White moved on, as all art, all artists do. But uh, I think he he started playing Gretsch. Do were you a big Clapton fan? Totally. So Huge. do you remember when he switched to Strats? It was one particular album, right? That yeah. That he switched over. Yeah. Yeah. And it was kind of con controversial. Yeah. You were yeah. a guitar player at the time, yeah? Yeah. yeah. So what do you think? Were you disappointed or you were just... Well, he moved, into a, he moved into an era where he wasn't being the guitarist's guitar. He wasn't... Clash. Clapton is God anymore. Yeah, he was kind of like becoming kind of a songwriter, kind of, you know, artist, He's singer. working like with the guys from the band. And yeah, like exactly. So it wasn't about being a guitar hero anymore. And that's always disappointing when you start out, you know, when you're <laughs> a guitar player. Yeah, 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 it's always. But then he came back and became right, a guitar hero right. again. So it's just kind of. There's this one uh, YouTube video of him where he's got the, you know, it's, he's wearing the like. The, the dad clothes on stage. Like, oh, yeah. Like, the shorts? Yeah, yeah. shorts. Yeah. There, but there's one particular video. Yeah. It's uh, I Shot the Sheriff. Yeah. It's on YouTube. You can find it where he just melts faces. Yeah. Like He's got it. He's still got he's it. He's still like, yeah. he, like he... Yeah. I heard an interview with Derek Trucks, too, where Derek Trucks, you know, toured in his yeah. band right. where they were doing a lot of the Layla stuff. Yeah. And he was like, kind of talked about like, just it wasn't every show, but like every once in a while... He'd like kind of let everyone know uh, I can still I can do this. I can still do yeah. it. Yeah. Don't think I'm you yeah. know can't do it. And and you yeah. talk about these moments that yeah. would just take everyone by surprise, which was pretty yeah. cool. That is cool. Hey, so what? It magically appeared in your lap. Yeah, What's this, this? is uh, it's a, it's a really old guitar. It's really clean. It's a '58 Firejet. I don't have a lot of really old guitars, but. I, I, this is one I bought uh, some time ago, so it wasn't expensive when I bought it. And uh, you can see kind of the age on the back. But on the front, you don't see the age until, unless you look at the checking. It's just springy and spongy sounding. And once again, it's a bit hard to play. 
but you play simple stuff on it. It's just so much character. So I like to balance the boutique guitars that are, you are like Ferraris and just you know like butter and make you play really smooth. Yeah. With the guitars that you kind of have to fight a little bit and and may, and they rough up your style. Do you find yourself uh, on sessions like having one track that's a single coil and one track that's a humbucker? Yeah, it's good to split things up. Yeah. Just the frequencies exactly. don't clash, yeah. right? They yeah. kind of. Yeah, and, and even between Fender and Gibson, the scale length makes a difference. I heard uh, difference. I heard Joe Satriani say once that if you do one part with a Gibson and one part with a Fender, because they're slightly different tempering on the neck because of the necks, you, it actually creates a really nice kind of, you know, sympathetic tuning thing. Like, yeah, 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 that actually sounds very interesting. Like they're slightly out of tune with each other in a way, so tempered differently. So it's breathing. Yeah. it's like making the. Yeah. The frequencies yeah. are clashing just enough to yeah. kind of yeah. pop out. Yeah, yeah, I, I would yeah. say. Now, I know um, you're you're all you know all, all the stuff about the studio recording. You like to you know there's left left side guitars, right side guitars. Now, when you do a session for someone, do you just let them decide that, or do you specifically put left and right? I encourage them. If I'm working with an engineer who's somewhat experienced and renowned, I don't want to. I don't want to step into theirs. I want their. I want to keep their ego healthy. Sure, sure. So I let them kind of, even if it's something I disagree with, I go with it. Uh, but if I'm sitting here and working, I generally like to have start with one guitar on the left, one guitar on the right. I like hard left and right because that's that's where you hear stuff, and then you put the drums and the vocal in the middle, uh, other stuff in the middle. But I love hearing guitars hard left and hard right. Then you can put a guitar in the center if you want for like the bridge or something. But I generally like to do stuff separate hard left and right it's just maybe the you know it's it's like acdc a lot of my favorite <laughs> records you know you put the headphones on you hear the guy over here and the guy over here yeah. and then overdubs come in and they might be in the middle or half panned or whatever but yeah, yeah. i'm i'm all for one guy on the left and one guy on the right and then whatever you can add to that <laughs> nice well uh you know we could be here for another 20 hours if we went through your whole guitar collection so Thanks for uh, taking the time and. We'll come back up here when you're teaching Look, a famous actor or something. Uh, <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. We, um, but we, I mean, I could do this a million more times with different guitars of yours. It's really fun. It's fun to do. It's fun for me to. I mean, I feel like I'm a viewer right now, so yeah. that's kind of cool. Okay, cool, cool. And uh, just be sure to check out uh, Tim Pierce in the link below if you haven't already. I'm sure you have, but if you haven't. Check out what he's doing. He's doing great stuff. That'd be great. Thanks. And I uh, just want to thank you for your time, man. I know it's thank you. Uh, valuable to you. Thanks so for yours, thanks too. Thanks again, bro. Thanks for your inspiration. Oh, thank you. That mutual respect. So right. we'll see you guys soon. Take care.